Today I want to take a look at how to query the Microsoft Dataverse using Postman. So we're going to be looking at two transactions. The first is to get an access token and the second is to get JSON data. Here we're looking at Postman and on the left we have an environments icon and we've created one environment with a series of different variables. Altogether, we have six. These variables allow us to tokenize our HTTP post so that we don't type everything in every request. It also makes it kind of easy reference if you want to move this and port it to your own environment and replace these tokens with your own values. So here we're looking at six different variables. The first is the URL for your Dynamics environment. This is the address of your Power Apps environment. The second is an Azure App ID. This is something that we're going to get from the Azure App Reg. Next, we have version 9.2, which is kind of hard-coded, and then Microsoft OAuth 2 and Microsoft OAuth again. So all these are kind of standard Microsoft things, but they build up the URL that we need. The top ones are really the, the more significant ones, where you're going to be looking at your CRM instance and also at your Azure app registration. Now, how do we find those values? If you're inside of Power Apps and you come over here to your um, gear icon and you go into Advanced Settings, this will show you your Dynamics URL. So again, when you're in Power Apps, do the gear icon in the corner and then come over to Advanced. Advanced will open the CRM screen and you'll be able to capture that URL. Now for the other one with the App ID, we come into Azure Active Directory we go into app registrations is the item that we're looking for. It has a blue icon here with the blue squares. And when you get into app registrations, you can create a new one, which will come with a application client ID. Here it's starting with FB. This is the GUID that we're gonna want for the second item. So now that we know how to get those two values for our environment, we want to take a look at two different HTTP posts. And I've got them over here in a collection. The first is how we're going to do the login. And the login is a little bit environment specific. So here we have the ID. This is of our Azure app registration, right? It's our GUID. And we have our client secret, which I'll show in just a minute. And up here we have our tenant. This is our tenant ID. I didn't show that one yet. So let's go back over and check things out with the tenant ID. Want to make sure you guys know how to, to get that one. So the directory tenant ID is listed right there. Yeah, 0A9. So that is our tenant identifier, and we're going to need that for our login. What we're trying to do here is log in and establish a token value. So here when we run the HTTP post, we're seeing an access token value that comes back. This token is a bearer token, which essentially is possession implies ownership. Um, you treat it like cash, right? You're, you're holding the token is proof that you can use the token. So we've authenticated, we've you know gotten this token that says we're allowed to do things on a certain scope. This is our effectively username and password. This is where we're trying to go to. This is our scope of what resources we want to work with. This is the tenant. And you know, basically this is a user and password here. So we've all logged in and we got a bearer token. Okay, cool stuff. This access token is what we're going to need to go ahead and fetch data next. So I'm going to take the whole value there for the access token, copy it up to clipboard, Come over here and query the context table. And all we're going to do is paste it in on the authorization tab. We have OAuth2, a prefix of bearer, and then there's our token that we put in. So we're telling this it's an OAuth2 bearer token that we're intending to use. And yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, query for some data. So let's see what we can get. And this one came back with an HTTP 200 and a value of empty JSON. So not particularly interesting. It successfully ran, but we actually don't have any data on the table. Back inside of Power Apps, if we come to our contact table and we go to the data tab over here on the right, 
we can do add record. And when we go to add record, this is where we can actually put in some data. So we might do like first and last, make a, a test record here, go ahead and save it. And with that record saved, we can come over to save and close, back into Postman, send it again. And now that we have data, you'll see value instead of an empty square brackets, that there's no data at all. We now see the data that we just input with our last name, first name, and all the, uh, the values that we provided. So last name, first name, there it is. And also up here, yeah, last, first, and both. So this is our user data. And we're getting this back with HTTP 200, and we've provided the bearer token. So really, it, it's only two steps. First is getting the token, second is using it. The challenge really is in wiring up some of the permissions and getting all these uh, various inputs together. I mean, in the Azure world of what we need to do for setup, once you make the app, you, you do want to go ahead and generate a secret, which is what we were using for our header. From an API permission, there are two items needed. The first item is a delegated CRM to access common data as users, and this happens in Azure. Okay, the second permission that we're going to need actually happens in the Power Apps Admin Center. So over here in the gear icon, there's an Admin Center. This is where we grant the second. Here we can look for the environment that we're working on, navigate into it, yep, and actually want to go to the three dots for settings. Here we go. Now we have users and permissions for the target environment. Under that, we'll have a link for application users. That's kind of funny because you think this would happen over in the Azure world. The app ID is identical to what we're getting from the Azure App Reg, but it's almost like there's permission grants that Power Platform can do, which Azure doesn't know about. And so inside of here, we want to edit security roles, and here you can check what you need. For this one, I basically have everything turned on, which that definitely makes it work for dev purposes. But when you're looking at production, you probably want to focus on the reader role and just grant the, the one item only. But once you grant the permissions here, this is what allows it to query for the one specific environment. Maybe not for everybody, right? And this is the benefit of having multiple Power Apps environments, is you can isolate and segment your permissions. So again, two permission grants, one that happens in the Power Apps Admin Center, the other happens in Azure. At the end of both, we can go ahead and send our HTTP post to get a token, use that token to fetch data, and now we have our Dataverse records from the contacts table coming back as JSON. Thank you for watching.